It's a film set in one room in real time during 90 minutes. And the room is a dispatch center in Denmark. And the main character that we look at for the entire film is uh, Asger Holm. He's a police officer that has been uh, removed from street duty because he's under trial. So he's put to work as an alarm dispatcher at the uh, emergency center. Early in the film, he receives a call from uh, what he finds out to be an abducted woman. And with the phone as his only tool, he tries to, he starts an investigation and tries to find out where this woman, woman is being taken. So that's one of the mysteries in the film. And the other mystery is who is this guy and why is he sitting here? The idea came actually from a YouTube clip that I stumbled upon, which was a real 911 call. Uh, similar to the first call Asker gets in the f by, by the by the woman in the film, which was like a 20-minute uh, sound clip of a real 911 call with a woman sitting next to her abductor calling 911. So she had to speak in code with the operator not to get caught. One of the things that fascinated me was how suspenseful a phone call could be. But the big thing for me and for my co-writer and producer was when we started talking about the images we had seen, only listening to sound and that these images had been different. We had seen a different woman in a different car, and um, that really became the seed of the idea, to try and make a film that would not only play out in the audience's mind, but also deal with uh, how we create images and why we do that, you know? I think it's always hard to write a script that's suspenseful for 100 pages, and it just becomes clear to everyone involved when it's in one room and one person. I think it's always gonna be hard. I think, uh, for the most part, I think it was a blessing to have these limitations because I really think it makes me and my co-writer more creative in the way we create scenes and narrative because we don't have all these references we can use. And we don't, often I think people tend to just do something as it's usually done. And when you remove that uh, possibility, then you start becoming more creative and you start uh, coming up with things that you haven't seen before. Uh, and I think this actually goes for everyone involved. I think it goes for the DOP and the editor and the sound designer and the actors and everyone. It kind of puts everyone on their toes. So it makes them work harder and it makes them be more creative. Yeah. So I had I'd been a fan of Jakob from before. I had seen him in, most notably, I really liked him in uh, Submarino by Thomas Winterberg. Uh, but we did do a casting with him, so he was, we did a casting with a number of actors, basically just having them sit and talk on the phone and to see who was intriguing to watch. So I knew it had to be a person that uh, could draw the audience in and had a level of mystery to him. And I think he has that, he has got something in his eyes that it feels like he's keeping a secret from you, just looking at him. There's constantly something going on inside. So that was very important and I think also he's I think he's a very nuanced, intelligent actor. He, he can do a lot with a little. It it's, uh, doesn't have to be very vivid and big, his acting. And I think that was very important for a film where you look at one face for 90 minutes. The acting had to be kind of like a slow burner. It couldn't be like uh, too dramatic in a way. So I think all these sides uh, made him a great fit. And then you starting to talk with the project about him. I felt a great chemistry with him as well. First thing we did was kind of introduce him to all the research that me and my co-writer had did. We went out on dispatch centers, interviewed police officers, psychologists, all kinds of things. So we introduced him to that. Um, but then closer to the shoot, it was very much analytical work. Me and him, we sat and went through the entire script word by word, discussing every sentence. Why is he saying this? What is his motivation? Because we knew it was a very short shoot and it's going to be very intense. We shot the film in very long takes, up to 35 minute long takes. So we couldn't stand on the set and discuss uh, little things. So it was a lot about preparing for chaos in a way. Yeah.